stocks close mixed on Wall Street even as the Fed's preferred inflation gauge comes in below expectations. Asian markets trade largely lower while the gift nifty is indicating a muted but a higher start for the Indian market. Inflation is moderating but the 4% goal still remains quite a distance away, says Governor Shakti Kanta Das. As RBI releases the minutes of the last monetary policy meeting, Governor also warns that conditions ahead could turn fickle and any change in stance could be risky. Infosys sees a global client terminate a deal for AI services signed in September. The deal was expected to be worth $1.5 billion over 15 years. Paytm says the use of AI could result in a slight reduction in workforce and 10 to 15% cut in employee costs. UPL announces it will look to raise around 4,200 crore rupees via a rights issue. SEBI releases consultation paper on introduction of optional T plus zero and instant settlement cycle, bringing about instant receipt of funds and securities. The measures could eliminate risk of settlement shortage and provide greater control to investors, but concerns over efficient price discovery, higher cost of trading and security divergence remain. Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines. We come back after a long weekend and this is the last trading day or week of the year as well. So let's get going and start talking about the Asian markets. They are largely lower in trade and it was a mixed handover that we got from the Wall Street as well. The Hang Seng markets, they are shut because of the last year of this uh, end of the year holiday. But Taiwanese index, that one is indicating uh, a five-tenths of a percent uptick, so to say, for now. If we look at the other indices as well, they are largely lower, barring Taiwanese index. So Shanghai is lower in trade, Nikkei is lower, so is the Straits Times. But if we look at the Gift Nifty, because that will indicate how our markets will perform, it's uh, flat but with some positive bias. 14 points uh, in the green uh, is the implied open, uh, what the GIF Nifty is suggesting right now, if we compare it with the uh, Nifty futures, which are at 21,402. But let's talk about the US markets now. Wall Street ended largely higher on Friday as the three major averages notched their eighth positive week in a row. For the week, the S&P advanced 0.8%, while the Dow added 0.2%, and the Nasdaq jumped 1.2%. The Federal Reserve's inflation gauge came in less than expected. The November Core Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index rose just 0.1% last month and gained 3.2% from a year ago. CNBC's Steve Kovac gets us wrap of all the action on Wall Street. U.S. markets were basically flat Friday after cooler inflation data as the major indexes extended the rally to eight straight winning weeks. The Dow shed just 18 points, the S&P 500 added eight points, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq up 29 points. For the first time since April 2020, prices fell on a monthly basis in November. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Index declined in November, bringing the annual inflation rate to 2.6%. Taking up food and energy costs, the so-called core PCE was also lower than expected. This is the Federal Reserve's favorite gauge of inflation, and it's getting a lot closer to the central bank's goal of getting back to 2% inflation. Lionsgate is spinning off its studio business into a separate public company. The television studio and motion picture group segments and the film library will be combined. That does not include the Stars platform, which will continue to be wholly owned by Lionsgate. The deal values the studio business at about $4.6 billion. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back to you, Mumbai. Okay, all right, that's what's happening in the Wall Street. But let's stay with the U.S. markets and listen to what Lion Brainard, who is the National Economic Council Director and former Federal Reserve Vice Chairman, had to say about the U.S. economy and growth prospects going forward. We're closing out the year with inflation on a six-month basis at 2%. That's the pre-pandemic benchmark. That's a very significant milestone. And with the 2023 close, it's worth noting just how much progress we've seen. Not only has inflation come down faster than even the most optimistic forecast, but growth is very resilient and employment is very strong. But the unemployment rate's been below 4% for 22 months running now. And we got more data today and yesterday confirming economic growth is robust. And if you look at after-tax income growth for Americans, 3.7% this year, that's after adjusting for inflation. Uh, 
uh, labor market looking quite balanced. We've seen a surge in people coming back into the labor market. That's also something that nobody was predicting. Remember when people were talking about the great resignation? Instead, we've seen a strong labor market bringing people back in, highest working age participation rate. And for uh, individual Americans, uh, they really are seeing prices coming down, whether it's uh, gas, uh, gallons of gas is now close to $3, a big reduction over the course of the year, a gallon of milk, uh, chicken in the grocery stores, uh, eggs, toys. I mean, you look across the board and you're actually. Okay, all right, that's the global market action, but how will these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have our research team joining in with what the trade setup looks like. The stocks that are likely to be in the news and the action from the FNO space. Uh, well, very good morning to all of you guys. Uh, first up, let me go across to Sudarshan. What is the market setup looking like today? Hi, morning, Sonal. So we have come after a long weekend, and it seems that queues that we are getting at least on global front are not to worry about. U.S. market on Friday largely had a good close, and the last hour recovery helped Nasdaq and S&P to close with minor gains, while Dow Jones had a minor cut. But the biggest outperformer was small cap index. In the last closing hour, it surged more than 2.5% from day's low to close at day's high. And on a weekly basis, US market saw gains for eight consecutive weeks. For our market, on Friday, we too had a good close amid volatility, but financials have remained a concern. And like Wall Street, the outperformance was seen in mid cap and small caps. And for today, GIF Nifty is so far indicating a start in the green, but sustainability will be key point this week ahead of year end as volumes are expected to remain low. Now on to commodities. Crude is now in a range amid Red Sea tensions with Brent is trading around $1.80 while WTI NYMEX is around $1.74 per barrel. Precious metals too continue to see buying with gold hitting record high and is now approaching the level of $2,100 per ounce. On institutional activities, FI sold shares of Rs. 2,829 crore, while DIs bought shares of Rs. 2,167 crore on Friday. So net-net, they were net sellers. Talking about queues for today, some major stocks that will be in focus and can impact market. First one is Infosys after a termination of global deal of over $1 billion for which they had signed MOU in the month of September. Second one is Wipro, company likely to have declined considering Sanjay Jalona for the post of CEO. And last, liquor stocks. Gujarat government has allowed consumption of liquor at Gift City. Hey, all right. Thank you so much for joining us with all those cues, uh, Sudarshan. But a lot of other stocks that will be on our radar as well. Hormaz has that list for us. Good morning, Hormaz. Good morning, Sonal. Coming off a long weekend, so it's a long list as well. Reliance Industries, where it's an ET report which says that it has signed a non-binding term sheet with Walt Disney to merge its India operations. Now, CNBC TV18 has reached out to Reliance Industries for a comment. And as Sudarshan was mentioning, Infosys, their global client has terminated their MOU that it was signed in September. It's a potential deal worth a billion and a half dollars. We'll keep that on our radar. Paytm has uh, mentioned that an AI-led transformation will result in a slight reduction in workforce, although they have not specified the quantum. And it says that it will save around 10 to 15 percent in employee costs. However, it says that the core business will see manpower increasing by around 15,000 in the coming year. Wipro has uh, denied rumors of former LNT Infotech CEO Sanjay Jalona joining the company in any capacity. The Aurobindo Pharma, uh, its arm UGR's New, Jer New Jersey unit, has received 10 observations from the US FDA, and the company has said that those observations are procedural in nature. Who has also uh, received procedural observations is Zydus Life, where its API site at Changodar in Ahmedabad has received six observations from the regulator. UPL has announced a 4,200 crore rights issue, although they have not specified on the details of the same. Adani Wilmar, where the promo uh, promoters are intending to sell around 1.2% stake in the company to comply with the minimum shareholding norms. Anupam Rasayan has signed a letter of intent worth 507 crore rupees or around $61 million with a leading Japanese chemical MNC for the supply of a new age polymer intermediate for a period of nine years. And lastly, Biocon, where Biocon Biologics has partnered with Sandoz for the distribution of the Adali Mumbab BS subcutaneous injections. And for that injection, it has received exclusive distribution rights for the Japanese markets. Back to you. Okay, all right. So that is a long list from us. Thank you so much for getting us up to speed. But a lot of cues from the FNO space as well. Mangla is joining us now, Mangla. 
Well, you know, as far as Friday's move is concerned, we did see the Nifty uh, meander in a bit of a range. It was, if you just take a look at the Nifty bank, that was the one that dragged or put a lid on the gains that we saw on the Nifty itself. So while the Nifty ended closer to the high point of trade, we had the Nifty bank, which ended at the low point of trade. And that explains why the Nifty was unable to cross past that 21,400 mark. And today, the big heavyweight index to watch out for will be the IT uh, index and largely because of the news that Hormaz and Sudarshan spoke about on both Infosys as well as Wipro. Nifty IT had been outperforming for a bit, but now its underperformance is likely to continue as well. So what does this overall mean for the markets? The Nifty range is between 21,250 at the lower level and 21,400 to 21,500 is where the congestion is and which is what the range was on Friday itself. And as we move towards the year end, we will see institutional volumes thinning out as well on a gross basis. They've been around that 10,000 crore mark uh, for both the FIs and DIIs. And, uh, you know, the cash market sale and purchase notwithstanding out there. The FI has sold more in Nifty Bank than Nifty itself. So in index futures, if you see the next, uh, the net sell was 241 crores. Nifty Bank futures was a sale of 541 crores itself. FIIs who are 68% long in index futures have scaled back to around 65%. Nothing really to worry about out there. But if you just take a look at the options action out there, 21,300 put was extremely active for a premium of 80 odd rupees, telling you that 21,200 would be a strong support and lower levels 21,150 as well. Um, keep an eye out on the Fin Nifty that will be having its weekly options expiry today. So that's something we'll be watching out for. And in terms of stocks, uh, watch out for Nalco because that's the one which has entered FNO Bank after a big move on Friday. Okay, all right, Manglam Sudarshan and Hormas, thank you so much for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. We come back after a long weekend. Let's see which way things go today. We'll do one thing, we'll slip into a short break. When we come, um, we'll talk about what the RBI governor said. Inflation is moderating, but the 4% goal still remains quite a distance away. We'll get you all the details after this short break. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's talk about the big news that we've been tracking over the weekend. Infosys is in focus. A global customer has terminated a $1.5 million MOU with the company. Reema, tell us more. What would it mean for the company and the stock as well? Well, it's clearly negative news. So first, just to go back in time, on 14 September 2023, Infosys had announced that they had entered into an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with a global company, for a deal which is valued at $1.5 billion of estimated spends over the next 10 years. But remember, this was an MOU. It wasn't that the Master Services Agreement was signed. They had also gone on to say that this MOU was subject to parties entering a Master Services Agreement, and this MOU was to provide enhanced digital experiences, modernization, business operation services, leveraging AI solutions of Infosys. A very large MOU. Right. But now over the weekend, the company has announced that the global company has decided to terminate this MOU and therefore these two companies will not enter into a master services agreement. Here it's important to note that this was an MOU. It's not a part of the company's announced deal values. When the company in Q2, that September ending, announced their deal wins, the Q2 deal win, the total contract value did not include this MOU. But it was expected, right, when a company like Infosys announces an MOU uh, publicly, it's just the implicit understanding is that it will translate into a deal. Otherwise, a company like Infosys will not go ahead and announce it. So in that sense, it may have been priced in by the uh, you know, market and this cancellation of an MOU will not go down so well. Back to you. Okay, clearly. So that stock which has been outperforming so far will see some impact today. Thank you so much, Reema, for bringing us all those details. Well, moving on, inflation is moderating, but the 4% goal still remains quite a distance away. That's RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das at the last monetary policy meeting as per the minutes of the meeting that were released. The governor had also warned that conditions ahead could be fickle. Lata Venkatesh is here with the details. Well, the standout part of the minutes is that uh, the RBI members are still very, very cautious. Uh, if you looked at uh, the governor's statement, uh, he points out that even three quarters, uh, even the third quarter of next year, which is exactly one year from now, inflation is expected to be 4.7%, which in his own words is perilously close to 5%. And he says that uh, things look very fickle. So this doesn't look like a governor who's in a hurry to cut because he thinks 47 is not good enough for him uh, to start expecting 4%. Uh, the uh, statement from Dr. Uh, Patra is even more... Uh, 
uh, hawkish. He points out that consumer sentiment, which the uh, RBI measures, is less confident of inflation falling than it was in the previous survey. And the second thing he says is that output gap has become positive, which means that uh, uh, demand is more than supply, so to speak. So he thinks that demand and inflation can't be ruled out uh, very soon. And Dr. R R Rajiv Ranjan also is more or less speaking the same language. They're not in a hurry to cut. My sense is that the big takeaway from the minutes is that uh, people who read it will actually push back their expectations of rate cut from the Reserve Bank. The external members are a little more benign and positive, but if three members of the Reserve Bank uh, on the MPC are still extremely cautious, then I think at least up until August next year, there is no expectation of uh, any cuts from the Reserve Bank. Okay, all right, that is uh, the update coming in from the MPC meet. But moving on, market regulator SEBI in a consultation paper has proposed the implementation of the T plus zero, an instant settlement cycle of trades in the equity cash segment. As per the consultation paper, the implementation of the T plus zero, an instant settlement cycle will be done as an option along with the current T plus one cycle continuing. SEBI has proposed to begin the implementation of the T plus zero cycle with the top five, uh, 500 listed companies as per market capitalization. Stakeholders will have time till January 12 to submit their responses to SEBI as well. So this is a developing story and we'll keep getting you more updates on this one. But we'll slip into another break and get you all the cues from the commodities market when we come back. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. It's time to talk all about commodity markets. There's a lot happening in that space. Manisha Gupta is joining us now. Hey, Manisha, good morning. Morning, Sonal. Thank you for that. Well, the last, last trading week of the year and a truncated one at that. And the major markets are shut today too. And with that, it's the weakness in US dollar that seems to be supporting commodities across board. So you have the crude oil prices trading in the positive, And this is after two weekly gains already. The prices were up 3% in the previous week. There are reports on how some of the tanker companies could be returning to the Red Sea on US backing. But the Angola exit from the OPEC raises concerns on group's ability to future control. So it's a bit of a mixed bag right now. But within all of that, we are slightly on the higher side for food prices. All-time highs is what we saw on Friday when it comes to bauxite prices. And this is after an uh, explosion in Guinea uh, oil terminal. Guinea, remember, is the world's third largest bauxite producer. Also, the Chinese ports have, while they have two to three months of inventory at ports, but it is going to be about the winter production cut policy that could be supportive for alumina. Aluminum prices in the meanwhile also have been supportive. We've seen three weeks of gains onto this one with the prices up by nearly 4% in the previous week itself. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Manisha. So that's the update from the commodity markets. But let's move on to some important news as well, other than the commodity space that we are tracking. A Liberian flag oil tanker merchant vessel, Kem Pluto, was struck on Saturday in the Indian Ocean, around 200 nautical miles away from India. The tanker included 20 crew members from India. The Indian Navy assisted in identifying the cause of the attack and on preliminary assessment suspect the vessel was struck by a drone. However, further forensic and technical analysis is to be conducted. To probe further, as the number of attacks in the Arabian Sea rise, the Indian Navy has deployed missile destroyers in various areas as a measure of caution. Let us now get you the latest from the war underway between Israel and Hamas. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to keep up the fight against Hamas. He, who visited Israeli troops on Monday, told lawmakers that the war is far from over and dismissed speculations that his government might call for a halt to fighting. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Israeli airstrikes killed at least 100 people in one of the deadliest nights of the war. Israel continued to bombard multiple areas in the Gaza Strip through Monday night as well. Okay, on, on that note, we'll do one thing. We'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast. But do stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next with all the action with respect to markets.